Hi, welcome to this Stair Tailored. I'm Sarah Powell from the University of Texas at Austin. And today we're focused on how to solve multi-step word problems. Now we're gonna think about word problem solving by thinking about our word problem schemas. A schema refers to the structure of the word problem. And there are six schemas that we regularly see used in the middle school grades. And those six schemas are total difference and change. And we also have equal groups, comparison, and ratios and proportions. And there are stair tailoreds about all of these that go into much more detail. But today we're gonna to see how we combine these in multi-step word problems. So here is a word problem. I see a mix of numbers and words, and so whenever I see a mix of the numbers and words, that means we're going to use our attack strategy. And the attack strategy we're gonna to use today is UPS check. I always like to write my attack strategy here, so I remember first I'm gonna understand, then we're gonna make a plan, then we're gonna solve it, and then we're gonna check our work. So let's understand this problem by reading it. Holly is having a birthday party. She buys two packages of streamers and four packages of hats. She pays with $20. How much money will Holly receive back? So let's think, what is this problem about? Well, I have to answer this question about how much money she's gonna get back. So I'm gonna go ahead and underline money there. And you know, sometimes I've seen teachers actually like write a little label. Remember we're talking about dollars here, not cents. So if you wanted to write something like that, that would be okay. So we're gonna have to figure out how much money Holly spent on things, and then we're gonna have to figure out how much Holly got uh, received back. So I have an understanding of this problem, and in talking through that, I first realize I have to figure out how much she spent, and then we have to figure out how much she got back. So I see that this is a multi-step problem. So now I'm gonna make a plan. Remember our plan should always be based on the schema. So let's think through this. Holly is having this birthday party. She buys two packages of streamers and four packages of hats. So if she is buying two packages of streamers and four packages of hats, I'm gonna use the equal group schemas to the equal group schema, I'm gonna use it twice to help figure out what's going on there. So uh, my equal group schema is groups times the number in each group for the product. And I'm gonna do that first for the streamers. And if you wanna label it just like this, that's great. And then we're gonna figure that out. I'm gonna just draw a line here so I don't get distracted. I'm gonna figure that out for the hats. And it's still, I need to figure out how much she's spending. So if she buys, how many pa packages of hats? Four groups of hats and they cost this much. How much does she spend all together? All right, so I've got that. But then she pays with $20. How much is she gonna get back? So we've got another step over here. Man, this is a big problem that we are solving. So if she pays with some money and she gets some money back, that means there's a change in her amount. So finally, I'm gonna use the change schema, and if she started with $20 and she spent some money, it's gonna be a decrease to a new end amount. Now, I like to talk through that beforehand and kind of figure all of that out. Sometimes you might solve this step and then figure out this one and then figure out that one, and that works there well as, um, as well. So we've got our plan. Let's go ahead and set up and solve this problem. So first, we're gonna figure out how many package of packages of streamers Holly bought. So let's see, she bought two packages of streamers, and each of those streamers costs uh, $1.99, all right? And so then we have to figure out how much she spent on the streamers all together. So uh, I'm not gonna do my, my math over there, I'm gonna kind of uh, do it over here, just to the side. So I'll do uh, $1.99 times two, and I will do my math here and hopefully not make any mistakes. So she spent on the streamers $3.98. I'll go ahead and put my dollar sign there. So I always remember I'm talking about dollars. Now we need to figure out how much Holly spent on the hats. So she bought four packages of hats. So there are four groups. And then how much is each group worth? Uh, $2.49. And then we have to figure out how much she spent all together. I'm gonna to move over here, nice to just my workspace here. And now I'll do $2.49 times four. Nine times four is 36. I need to do some regrouping. And so she spent $9.96 on the hats. All right. 
So now we know she spent $20. So she, um, she didn't spend $20. She started with $20. And then she spent $3.98 and $9.96. So this is one of those change problems that has multiple changes in it. So we have $20 and then she spent $3.98 and she spent $9.96. And then our job is to figure out the new end amount. Now, there's lots of ways that I could do this. I could do 20 minus uh, $3.98. Uh, I'm actually going to add these together to just make it maybe a little bit simpler for me, but it might be different processes for different students. As I quietly solve my problem here. So I know that she spent $13.94 in all. So then I'm gonna do 20 minus $13.94 equals question mark. And I'm gonna go right over here to my calculation space again. It's always nice to have some extra space on my page or on my board. Do this here. Oh my gosh, I have a very complicated regrouping if I choose to regroup in this way. All right, zero, nine. So how much does she have remaining after buying those streamers and buying those hats, she has $6.06 .06 remaining. And I put a label on there with my dollar sign. Remember, we had already labeled that a little bit earlier. Now, what you'll see with this problem, I'll kind of scoot over um, so I'm not standing in back of the writing, is that I didn't do all of the things here. I didn't like check off each number. You're totally welcome to do that. Here, I was really just kind of focused more on the schemas and the different schemas that were involved. Um, but you're welcome to bring in any of those work, uh, work process strategies and work checking strategies that you want to. So we've solved this problem, and then it's time to check my work. So I could check the work by starting adding $6.06 .06, uh, with $9.96 and $3.98 and seeing if that equals $20. Um, and there's other ways we could check our work as well. Now we're gonna solve another multi-step problem. I'll be right back. Let me erase this and then I'll be right back with that problem. All right, we see another word problem, and whenever we see a word problem, we want to use our attack strategy. And our attack strategy that we're gonna use is UPS check. So let's understand this problem by reading it. A teacher buys six bags of snack mix. Each bag contains two and one half cups of snack mix. The snack mix is shared evenly among the 30 students. How many cups of snack mix will each student receive? All right, so in this problem, we're figuring about, we're figuring out the cups of the snack mix. And we have to figure out how many each student will receive. So let's see, I've got an understanding of this problem. I now need to make a plan. Let's see, so a teacher buys six bags of snack mix and each bag has two and one half cups. So I think first I have to figure out how much snack mix we have and then I'm gonna share the snack mix evenly among the 30 students. So at first, if I have six bags of snack mix and there's two and one half cups in each, uh, each bag, that's an equal groups problem. So I need to figure out how much we have when we have six groups and each group has two and one half cups. Then we're gonna share this evenly. So this is our next part of our problem. So I'm gonna draw a line there to kind of show that we're working on another step. Then I've got all this snack mix and I'm gonna share it evenly. And let's see if I have 30 groups of students, I need to figure out how much will each student get. So that's also an equal groups problem. And so I will solve that accordingly when I get to that part. So we've got our plan. So let's go ahead and set up and solve this problem. So a teacher bags, buys six bags of snack mix. So six tells me the number of groups I have in my first step. And we know that each bag has two and one half cups. So each the bag's value is two and one half. And I actually am gonna write that in decimal form to just make that a little bit easier for me with the calculation. So we have to figure out how much snack mix we have in all. So if I do my um, multiplication here, then I have 15, and it's not 15 bags of snack mix, it's uh, then I have 15 cups of snack mix, all right? 
So that's how much we have to then share with these 30 students. So then over here, if I know that I have 30 students, I'm gonna consider those students my groups. And I don't know how much each of them is going to eat, all right, and actually I should go over here and check off my 30. I wanna be consistent there. Um, but I know I have 15 cups uh, in all that those 30 students can share. So here to solve for uh, the question mark, I could do this algebraically and I could divide each side by 30. So then each uh, student has five tenths of a cup of snack mix, or I could also put this in fractional form because originally it was in fractions. So I could say that each student gets a half of a cup or half of the cups. In fact, I should probably just say cup if we're being consistent with our, our grammar there. So uh, either five tenths of a cup or one half of a cup of snack mix. So we've solved the problem and now we wanna go back and check our work. So I could first check this work here by multiplying 30 times 1 half, so plugging 1 half back into the equation. 30 times 1 half does equal 15. And then I could check my work over here by checking that 15 divided by 2 and 1 half, or 15 divided by 6 is going to be um, the other number that's in our equation. So we've double checked our work, so we double check our, question, our, our check mark there. So that's how we can solve different types of multi-step problems. Man, that page looks really messy because you can see multi-step problem solving is a, a messy process. But when we think about how we can use our schemas within multi-step problem solving, it makes it much easier for students to set up and solve these types of problems.